good morning one and all uh, so today the topic of presentation is andhra pradesh leading india's global journey india's journey to a global chemical manufacturing hub so i represent uh, andhra pradesh economic development board so uh, briefly andhra pradesh economic development board is the facilitating arm from the government of andhra pradesh honorable chief minister is the chairman of the board so we uh, our mandate is to facilitate investments and uh, either manufacturing or whatever economic developments to the state of andhra pradesh so let us look at uh, india's landscape in the chemical sector so we can briefly uh, divide the sector into five segments uh, so major, the first portion will be petrochemicals agrochemicals fertilizer alkali chemicals and specialty chemicals so if you look at it there's a huge uh, as it has been presented earlier by uh, prashant ji and multiple other speakers before me so the market is continuously growing uh, if you look at uh, petrochemicals the refining capacity is growing and at natural gas we are still at 6% the target is 15% but global uh, average is 23% so there's a huge scope and ethanol blending uh, bioethanol which is going to substitute to the refining sector so the target of 2030 has been pushed back to 2025 and even agrochemical sector we are exporting uh, that 36000 crores of agrochemical chemicals are being exported and 29000 crores for the domestic market we can see that even agrochemicals we are making more for the world than for the domestic market and the fertilizer uh, urea uh, around 36 million tons uh, is being is our consumption and we have produced only 26 and 20 25% we are importing so uh, we are talking about green hydrogen so uh, instead of looking at green hydrogen export there is a huge domestic demand in the country and alkali chemicals after petrochemicals alkali chemicals are the largest chemicals in demand so soda ash and caustic soda are the key chemicals uh, in the sector so uh, i mean uh, we, till 2021 we are net importer and now we are fairly ba uh, balanced but the demand is increasing so if you look at how andhra pradesh is performing in each of the sectors in petrochemicals we have H hpcl uh, which is planning for expand and we have ongc gale at the kg based network we have reliance at the kg based network and uh, and bioethanol and cbg is also another uh, key points of investment for the state of andhra pradesh so uh, with the government bioethanol push more than 20 bioethanol companies are coming to the state of andhra pradesh and uh, more than 15 cbg plants are in development if you look at agrochemicals uh, andhra pradesh represents 12% of the agrochemical production market in india so deccan fine chemicals and nagarjuna agrochemicals are the leading uh, companies in the state and if you look at fertilizers urea and npk fertilizers we have nagarjuna and koramandal uh, and alkali chemicals we have grasim andhra sugars and sraac so and multiple specialty chemical sector so what i mean to say is there's a there's a good ecosystem of industry already in place and uh, is not of building from the scratch but it is developing what is already there and uh, more more people can come and expand on this opportunity so if you look at uh, the locations uh, this is the state of andhra pradesh uh, so uh, majority of the investment are focused on the visakhapatnam kakinada region uh, so the, the districts visakhapatnam ankapelli and kakinada districts this is the detailed map of andhra pradesh of the 26 districts of the state and uh, the, the other districts nellu tirupati and karnool these are the potential emerging locations where uh, new investments can be planned so the entire state has 972 kilometers of coastline from one end to other end and uh, so so uh, coming to chemicals and infrastructure uh, pcpr policy of government of india is a uh, is a great push uh, to promote chemical manufacturing in the state so andhra pradesh uh, has one of the largest pcpr region where we have notified 640 square kilometers of land uh, to the pcpr of andhra pradesh and which is predominantly the kakinada to anakapalli region 
so it is a uh, stretch of 140 kilometers and uh, so uh, more than 2000 crores of investments have been grounded over there and uh, there's already employment generation of 1.4 uh, lakh lakhs and they expected to reach 10 times uh, the employment over there so uh, so when we talk about infrastructure about andhra pradesh we call us ourselves state of the port infrastructure so uh, we have six ports already up and running uh, with a capacity of 320 million metric tons per annum and we are developing four more ports uh, in the state so at the end uh, one end we have mullapeta port and uh, on the southern end we have krishnapatnam port in between so every 150, 150 to 200 kilometers along the coastline you find a port and uh, so it is very crucial uh, because we look at ourselves as the gateway to the east. So what about the ports? The ports create that uh, logistics, logistical ecosystem for your uh, material imports to come in or your production to export. So with huge uh, national highway connectivity, so Andhra Pradesh have over 8,600 uh, odd Right now, it will be over 9,000 kilometers of national highway and 46,000 kilometers of state highway. And with these ports and the various storage capacities, so the state can link to the almost 50% of the India's hinterland to uh, give you access uh, to the logistic connectivity. And uh, the other point is dedicated freight corridor, uh, which is one of the prestigious uh, project uh, under, under the union government. So uh, dedicated freight corridor, uh, The big advantage of Andhra Pradesh is this geographical location, which is undeniable. And uh, from the location of Vijayawada, which is the uh, 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 upcoming Amaravati, the capital of Andhra Pradesh, you can connect to Kanakpur in the east, Chennai in the south, uh, Delhi in the north, via Nagpur, Itarsi, or uh, Mumbai in the east. So we are pretty much connected to the four corners of the India uh, through, through the dedicated freight corridor railway network. So anywhere uh, you can put up your facility in the state, uh, you are pretty much connected. And the other point is the national gas grid. So uh, we have an electric, electricity grid and uh, the river, uh, reverse grid. Or so this is one of the uh, union government's proposal of national gas grid. And Andhra Pradesh forms a key link because uh, from south to north, uh, uh, I mean, the gas grid, there's a huge pipeline is going to come up and uh, there are also proposals for the uh, LNG terminals at each of these locations. So if you look at uh, this blue artery, so you have a national highway, you have a dedicated freight corridor, uh, you have, you are coming up with a gas pipeline, the ports are coming up, the VCA is industrial corridor being built up, what more? And coming next, uh, chemicals are the largest energy guzzlers. So we need a lot of energy for the manufacturing. And Andhra Pradesh has identified uh, potential of 80 gigawatts of RE, RE capacity, and of which only 10%, 8.4 is utilized. And we're going to see more uh, RE projects coming up. And Andhra Pradesh have uh, pump house hydrogen uh, policy and we have identified potential of 30, 33 gigawatt hour of pump house hydro which is uh, 1.5 times of our installed capacity of two, uh, 24 uh, so uh, that's that's the focus uh, we're working on and if you look at green hydrogen uh, when it comes to re so re electricity and uh, to the green hydrogen so basically 75% of entire green hydrogen is for is the cost of electricity and if you can see that six states uh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka these six states account for 75% of global electricity I mean India's RE potential and green hydrogen uh, if you look at Andhra Pradesh uh, the dishes of Royal Seema, Karnool, uh, the unified Karnool, Kadapa, Anantapur and Chittur. So they have huge uh, land bank potential 
and which can be evacuated to the uh, PCPI region or any other region in the state for, for the green hydrogen manufacturing or the chemical industry setup. So, uh, so one at the supply side, at the demand side. And uh, the state has uh, multiple identified clusters uh, with land bank. So at each of these clusters, 25 clusters in the 12 districts, we have a land bank of over 70,000 acres. So uh, that's one. And the next thing is skilled manpower. So, so Andhra Pradesh uh, focus, we focus on human skill development. And uh, that's one of the key uh, policy which was driven by our chief, uh, chief minister. So uh, to conduct a skill census in the state. So if you look at institutes of higher education, we have multiple central universities, state universities, uh, deemed uh, 100 plus engineering colleges and 300 plus diploma colleges, which gives you the, uh, the continuous bandwidth of skilled manpower in the state. So if you look at uh, more than 25% of the IT workforce are from uh, the state of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, so 